Welcome to another episode of American Scooter. Uh, this episode, the video and audio, is going to look and sound a lot different uh, for reasons I'm going to explain later in the video. But let's get into it right now. Uh, for the last, well, five or six months, I've been out of town. Uh, I took an out-of-town job, and I basically lived in another part of the United States uh, for this entire time. So wasn't home, wasn't able to do anything, uh, pickled my scooter shop, my whole house. Uh, and I have finally returned home, uh, and I have been getting back into old projects, projects around my house, other projects not related to old Vespas, uh, but now it's time to get into projects in my scooter shop. And as you can see in the video, I've got a lot of new projects here. One project, if you've been particularly observant with the channel, uh, you would have noticed an old Right Side Drive Mini that I had out on my patio. Uh, that project got away from me, and I ended up selling that project. Uh, and I picked up this old uh, 1984 Chevrolet K20. Uh, right when I got home, I got to work on that truck. Uh, got it completely sorted and run it. Well, not completely sorted, uh, but did get it running. And today, I'm actually using that truck uh, to move a bunch of junk and move a bunch of uh, these new scooter projects uh, over to my scooter graveyard. First things first, I got everything out of the shop and basically just started cleaning up. And I started loading everything into the truck and got ready to go. The gas gauge in the truck doesn't actually work. So I stopped at the gas station, filled it up so I knew I was good, and took off. But along the way, I had a little problem. So after I left the gas station, I was rolling along just fine on my way to storage. But then I started to have some kind of a problem and the truck started to hesitate and then it lost power and I had to pull over quickly and assess what was going on. Well, I tried to restart that. the truck several times to no avail uh, and I was super frustrated. So happened? I ended up calling a friend of mine who would help me do some work on the truck and uh, see if he could help me figure out what was going on. Hesitating and then started to go and basically just acted like it ran out of gas. I pulled over and now I'm on the side of the road and I am on the wrong tank. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. God damn it. Yeah, there she goes. Yay! Crisis averted. So fun with old trucks. Uh, the truck has two fuel tanks. Uh, and I didn't think about it, but I had been running on the right side fuel tank. Uh, and when I pulled over for gas, I filled up the left-hand tank. And it didn't occur to me that I needed to flip that little switch. So I did actually just run out of gas uh, when I thought I had some kind of bigger problem. And it turned out, well, the only problem was I'm dumb. So, yeah, I, uh, I switched switched uh, the switch to the left side tank and the truck fired back up. And I went on about my way, headed over to storage, dropped off all the junk, uh, and then, well, headed home and got back to work. Uh, getting Leo's scooter ready and uh, repaired. Right before I take off for four months, I decide I'm going to pull Leo's scooter into the shop, pull the tank out, and swap out that fuel tap. So he had called me and said that fuel was dumping out or pouring out of the bike. And I made an assumption that fuel was leaking from the fuel tap. And I've had some faulty fuel taps. So I thought, you know, it it's must be the fuel tap. I had previously had the tank out, didn't swap it. And I thought, you know, I, I, may, I must have made a mistake. And so I'm just going to get this done real quick before I take off. Uh, so I get to prepping to get the tank out, you know, pull the seat and pull the backrest. And I get into the carburetor and disconnect the fuel line. And then I just happen to pop the cap open and have a look inside. And the tank is full of fuel. And I was <laughs> super angry because I thought to myself, well, the thing was leaking fuel. Why would you put, why would you fill the tank up? Uh, just to ride it over to my house. He doesn't live that far away. He knows I have to take the tank out. And so I texted him and, uh, you know, well, why is this thing full of fuel? And then we would talk on the phone. Uh, and I realized that it was just this kind of crappy, you know, Italian to English translation thing that sometimes uh, uh, happens with him. And so when he told me it was dumping fuel, it wasn't actually d dumping fuel. Um, it was fuel was pouring out of the exhaust uh so you know i realize 
hey man, are you kicking the bike over and fuel shooting ev- shooting out of it? Yes. Oh well, here's the problem. Uh, you're not turning the fuel tap off, and I had told him multiple times he needed to do this uh, when he sets the bike up. So. You know, the needle valve in the uh, carburetor is probably faulty, so I swap it, put everything back together, and I go to give it a test ride, only to discover that I've actually got another problem. So I can't actually actuate the choke at all. I can't pull the choke lever out. And uh, I just do a little test on the carburetor with a screwdriver, and the choke is is functioning fine. I I can... you know, actuate it with the screwdriver. But for whatever reason, the choke lever is just stuck and I cannot move it at all, which means I have to take the tank out anyway. Uh, so I have to go inside and give Leo a call. Hey, sorry. Uh, there's there's another problem with, there's a different problem with the Vespa. Okay. Uh, it's not a big deal, but I can't, I went to start it and I can't pull your choke out at all. So I thought maybe something was wrong with it at the carburetor, but there's nothing wrong. I can I can push it with the screwdriver and open it up. But the second I close the choke, I can't pull the little thing back out again. So uh, I don't I don't really know what the hell that problem is, but I I didn't want to bring it to you, and then you can't pull the choke to start it without without taking half you know without ta- opening up the carburetor. So now I gotta. Now I gotta take the gas tank out anyway, um, because I gotta look and see why the choke is sticking. Okay. So Don't now worry, the the Vespa is still actually stuck here. Okay, okay. Don't worry. I'm sorry to have to do this again. So I don't know. I'll um. I, I don't need the Vespa because I have the Vespa. So take your time. And... Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember to remember to always turn the gas off on Marco's Vespa. So, every time. Uh, All right. Okay. Okay. See, maybe otherwise next week. Okay, ciao. Bye. Bye, ciao, ciao. So, I pull the bike back into the shop, and I set about getting the tank tank out uh, to see what's going on. I had my suspicions, uh, and my suspicions were correct. The choke cable was uh, basically, wasn't sitting in the little tube Uh, that holds the lever in place and it was basically outside of that tube and when I went to kind of mess with it it it, when I had put the bike back together and put the tank back in uh, I guess I must have missed it or maybe I didn't seat it properly or just didn't see it but that little uh, ferrule end the little metal cap end on the end of the choke cable was actually stuck inside the tube and I, I couldn't get it out. I, nothing I could do could get that thing out of there. And I messed with it and messed with it and messed with it. Uh, and if you've ever messed with one of those choke tubes in the bike, you know that, like, if you, it's pretty fragile. Like, if you, you know, if you wrestle with it, you're going to bend it. And I started to bend it and was just, it was a complete nightmare. And I just was like, what am I going to do with this thing? So I came up with uh, an idea. Uh, and basically, I took a piece of fuel line, uh, I cut a section of fuel line and used a couple of hose clamps. Uh, I trimmed down the choke cable and I basically slid the fuel line over the choke cable and put the choke cable in place and used hose clamps to hold the fuel line, basically hold the fuel line to the uh, choke cable itself and then use a hose clamp to hold the fuel line to the choke tube. So this would basically keep the choke outer cable uh, fixed in place on the tube itself, uh, and it wouldn't budge. And I I had to trim the cable back a little bit because uh, without taking out, without being able to get out that little ferrule, uh, it essentially makes the outer portion of the choke tube too long, so you can't actuate the choke properly. So I had to trim it back so it would essentially be the correct length. Uh, and it ended up working out great. I was able to get the choke cable um, to function properly. The choke was nice and smooth. It worked great. Uh, and I was able to get the bike all back together again. 
so why does this video look and sound so different than everything I've done on this channel so far? Well, in the time uh, that this video spans, uh, I had started working on the scooter, oh, in this video, uh, back in the summer before I left for work. Well, now it's the winter. Uh, while I was away, I had a friend help me build a new video editing computer, um, and he shipped the machine to me so I could play around with it. Uh, I'm not completely certain uh, that all the new, the, or the I guess the old video that I previously shot was uh, with it, and I, I feel like I'm at literally missing video that I had shot, uh, but I don't know, I don't know what happened to it. So whatever, I get back, and I get back to work, um, and I've got all these new toys, like this fancy microphone I'm using, and I bought a new GoPro, and a bunch of other things, so I get back to work on this video, and I'm working with new editing software, and so this episode is actually more about me learning how to, well, use all this new stuff, and it's kind of practice, so, you know, you get this weird episode out of me. So in the time uh, before that job started, I had got fixed the choke cable, I got it all back together, and then... Uh, the next morning, there was a humongous pool of two-stroke oil underneath Leo's Vespa. Uh, overnight, all the oil had leaked out. And I just, like, ah, my God. So uh, Leo's Vespa sat in my shop uh, for this entire amount of time until I got home. Uh, and so it's not until right now uh, when I pulled the tank back out again to discover that when I had put everything back in, uh, the oil line had actually, there was a crack in it that I had created uh, and all the fussing about. Uh, and, and so I put it all back together and the oil just all leaked out. So at any rate, uh, back to it. Uh, I got, like I said, got the uh, oil line, new oil line put on, new fuel line put on, got the tank back in, uh, got the bike running, and got the bike out of here. Ready? It's ready. Oh, yeah, thanks. That one is, was very really well. Good job. What was the problem? Uh, the, um, you, said you meant to find tube, uh, the tube, I remember. When I put the fuel tank back in, yeah. clamp that holds the oil hose on, yeah, yeah. cut into it. Okay, I got it. And it split. Okay. And so it was just leaking oil the whole time. Oh, I got it. So yeah. now, so I replaced the clamp. Well, I put a new hose, yeah. new clamp. I put new fuel hose. Put it all back together. Um, yeah. Good. This poof runs again. some stuff to storage yeah well, we say we can drive uh, these two buckles together you this one me Marco and at the end uh, I will drive you back yeah. with the car oh. so I have the best plan in my house yeah, yeah. and you have less best plan in your store yeah. hey, hey thanks for watching the least technical uh, informative vintage Vespa video I've done so far and entertaining my new learning curve in video production. Uh, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you think about this strange episode. Uh, and keep a lookout. I'm going to be back real soon with some new stuff. So, you know, just wait longer. Uh, but hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, see you on the next one. Ciao.